Good day, students. As promised, today I will continue the beginner series for Wuthering Waves, a series where I plan to touch on every single aspect of the game you need to know to have the best start if you are a new player. And in this second episode, I will go over all of the game's main systems, which will cover everything from exploration to union level and enemy mechanics, as well as the primary game modes available, such as Tower of Adversity and Depths of Illusion Realm. If you missed the first video, you can find the link in the description or click on the message, which should be in the top corner of your screen. If all of this sounds good, buckle up and sharpen those pencils and open your notebooks, as today's class is hereby in session. Now let us start talking about the various game systems which will be present in the game movement and exploration. The main features of this system are Sprinting doesn't consume stamina outside of combat, and you have a grapple that covers medium to long distances whilst consuming stamina. Mid-air jumps also consume stamina and reset once you touch the ground. Wall running depletes more stamina but allows you to climb faster, and you have more control over your movement while sliding down an incline. While wall running, if you hit a roof ledge, your character may grab it and lift themselves over. When you stop gliding, holding any movement input will make you move in that direction as you fall, and you can stop at any time. Additionally, like in Genshin, the gadget menu can slow time while you select a tool. Exploration Exploration is divided into zones, with progress measured in percentages based on the chests and puzzles you complete in each area. You earn points at the Pioneer Association for every 20% of progress, up to 80% per zone. Accumulating a certain number of points unlocks new gadgets and recipes, which aid in your exploration and help speed up progress in other regions. Relics While exploring, you may come across Sonan's caskets, which are collectibles scattered throughout each nation. You can hand them over to an NPC in each nation, and after collecting a certain number, you'll rank up and receive rewards. These rewards include resonance chains for your rover, main character, as well as other rewards. Union Level First up is the Union Level which represents your overall account level in Wuthering Waves, same as the Adventure Rank from Genshin, which can be increased by earning Union XP. This XP is primarily gained through completing in-game missions and events, as well as by using Waveplate, the game's stamina system. As your union level rises, you unlock additional game functions, such as daily activities, and increase the number of times you can ascend your resonators and weapons, thus raising their level cap, again same system as in Genshin. Moreover, enemy difficulty in the overworld escalates at certain union level milestones, with the maximum union level capped at 60. Concurrently, the SOL3 phase intensifies every 10 union levels, heightening enemy challenges and rewards. You can switch between unlocked SOL3 phases every 24 hours. Waveplate. Moving on, Waveplate serves as the stamina system for Wuthering Waves, used to acquire resources and materials from various game dungeons. It regenerates at a rate of one Waveplate every six minutes, with the capacity to store up to 240, replenishing fully each day, which is honestly great, as you're not forced to make multiple logins each day. Waveplate can also be refilled using Crystal Solvent or Astrites, where Crystal Solvent instantly grants 60 Waveplate when consumed. Quests Next up, we have the Quests system, which is again similar to the Hoyo Games Quest layout. They are spread in the following manner. Main Quests Identified by a yellow marker in your quest log and on the mini-map, these quests reward Astrites and substantial Union XP. Companion Quests These side quests, marked in purple, provide deeper background and lore for specific resonators, offering Astrites and Union XP as rewards. Side Quests Marked in blue, these quests may also offer Astrites. Exploration Quests Highlighted in green, these regional quests introduce players to new areas and include lore. Activities 
Daily missions that deliver a semi-randomized set of seven activities each day, requiring the collection of 100 activity points to unlock all daily rewards, including 60 asterites and additional materials. Drifting Inscription This set of beginner missions aids players' early progression by offering various resources. It includes six pages of missions designed to guide newcomers. Trophies A series of tasks that, when completed, yield varying amounts of asterites. You can look at it as the achievement system of this game. Pioneer Podcast The Battle Pass system of Wuthering Waves, available in a free tier and a premium one, which can be unlocked by paying real money. The Pioneer Podcast, which resets periodically, likely every six weeks, offers players rewards for completing daily, weekly, and periodic missions. The premium tier cost $10, with an advanced version available for $20, which includes early rewards by giving 10 levels when you purchase it and an exclusive four-star weapon selector, similar to the battle pass from Honkai Star Rail. Enemies Enemies are categorized into three types, small, medium, and bosses. Each type has a distinct and more dynamic moveset, with some small enemies using special abilities to aid other small foes. There are also pure elemental enemies that are immune to their own element, while others are simply more resistant. This resistance system also applies to bosses. Enemies stagger and vibration strength. Medium and boss enemies have a stagger meter, known as vibration strength. When this meter is depleted, the enemy becomes immobilized and vulnerable to all attacks. You can deplete this meter faster by dealing vibration damage through heavy attacks, certain skills, and countering their flawed attacks. Once the meter is depleted, you have a limited time to deal damage before the enemy fully recovers. Understanding this mechanic is crucial for the end game and for knowing when characters can parry flawed attacks. Dodging Timing your dodge perfectly during an attack triggers extreme evasion. This briefly slows time and lets you skip to the final step of your normal attack combo. Your invincibility frames, iframes, remain active as long as you continue dodging without attacking. You can only dash to dodge twice before an internal cooldown activates. However, swapping characters resets this internal cooldown. Up next, let us take a look at the main game modes where you will be able to use the waveplate each day. Resource Boss Stages In Wuthering Waves, players will find dungeon entrances and special fields scattered across the overworld. These areas are designed for resource and material farming to advance your account. To access the rewards from these stages, players must expend Waveplate, Stamina. Types of Stages Simulation Field these will be the basic resource stages that vary by the type of materials they offer, with each simulation field run costs 40 wave plate. They are divided as such. Simulation Resonance Potion, which rewards materials for Resonator XP. Simulation Energy Core, which rewards materials for Weapon XP. Simulation Shell Credits, which rewards the in-game currency. Simulation Sealed Tube which rewards material for Echo XP. Forgery Challenge Stages that provide materials for Weapon Ascension Fort upgrades aligned with the five different weapon types. Check your Resonator page to determine the specific materials needed. Each run costs 40 wave plate. Boss Challenge Boss stages reward materials for Resonator Ascension. Each boss drops unique materials. Check the Resonator page for specifics. Resetting these bosses requires defeating another one. Each challenge costs 60 wave plate. Tacit Field Cleanup Rewards materials for Echo Tuning, Echoes, and Echo XP. Each field offers Echoes with different Sonata, set effects. Choose fields based on the desired Sonata effects. Each cleanup costs 60 wave plate. Weekly Challenge Weekly bosses provide special Forte upgrade materials, standard weapon molds, used for weapon crafting, weapon EXP materials, and Echo EXP materials. Rewards can only be claimed once a week. Each challenge costs 60 wave plate. 
Tower of Adversity, a challenging mode where players aim to defeat enemies as quickly as possible. Rewards vary from zero to three crests per stage, based on completion time, influencing the quality of rewards. The tower is divided into three zones. Stable Zone consists of one tower divided into four stages, rewards asteroids once. Experimental Zone consists of two towers divided into eight stages, rewards asteroids once. Hazard Zone consists of three towers divided into ten stages, offers repeatable asteroids rewards, and is considered more challenging. In the experimental and hazard zones, which feature multiple towers, the additional towers contain enemies of the same level as the first tower, but involve two or more waves of enemies. However, the middle tower in the hazard zone has only two stages and features higher level enemies and bosses, starting at level 100. Essentially, this mode serves as Wuthering Waves counterpart to Abyss in Genshin Impact or Memory of Chaos in Honkai Star Rail, but with a twist, which is the Vigor system. Vigor is a stamina system unique to each zone in the tower, determining participation based on the available Vigor per Resonator, so you will need multiple units to be built up, as you cannot use the same exact team like you would have used in the Hoyo games. This has positive as well as downsides. On one side, it promotes diversity in team building as well as strategic thinking before tackling down this mode. And on the downside is that you will not invest in multiple units. Another thing to note is that characters have 10 vigor, with each stage consuming 1 to 4 vigor depending on its difficulty. Vigor is also shared across all towers within the same zone. For example, vigor used in the stable zone won't affect the experimental zone. After completion of this challenge, you'll gain points that can be used to buy upgrades and Phantom Echoes, their shiny versions with crit as the main stat. However, you must complete the earlier stages before attempting the later ones. Depths of Elusive Realm the Depths of Elusive Realm is a roguelike game mode in which players choose a resonator to explore a simulated environment. Here, they gather a variety of random buffs to enhance their team and combat enemies. As players navigate through semi-randomized combat and non-combat stages, their ultimate objective is to defeat the boss at the final stage. This mode does not consume any wave plate, and players can initiate unlimited runs. In the depths of Elusive Realm, players can periodically obtain rewards like astrites and materials for upgrades. In essence, this mode mirrors the simulated universe from Honkai, Star Rail in the context of Wuthering Waves, Tactical Hologram. Tactical holograms feature one-time boss challenges that escalate in difficulty. There are four distinct bosses, each offering six levels of increasing challenge. Successfully completing these challenges for the first time grants players various echo-related materials and drill datasets. These drill datasets can then be used in the game store to acquire additional echo materials and asteroids. And that is all for this episode. Hopefully now all of the game modes and systems are clear to you, but if you still have questions about any of them, you can ask away in the comment section below. Up next in this series will be an episode about resonators followed by an analysis of the echo system, so stay tuned for those as they should be up pretty soon. Now, as a conclusion, I also want to know how your experience with Wuthering Waves has been since the launch of the game, and if you are currently enjoying it or not. I know I am, especially after the selector we got, which basically guaranteed all my wanted three standard unit picks, which is honestly pretty great. Which unit did you choose from the selector? I'm also curious about this topic. Till next time, I am Professor Veritas Ratio, and remember, stay smart and sexy.